Hi, today we're going to look at the derivation of the batch reactor equation. A batch reactor is typically a tank, and usually the contents of the tank are fairly well stirred, so that the contents have a uniform concentration, and let us say that we'll call the concentration of some species I in that tank Ci, and the number of moles of I in that tank we'll call Ni, and the volume we'll call B. Our system that we're going to do our mole balance over, and remember reactors is basically just mass and mole balances that are applied. Our system is now the contents of the tank, in other words, all of this over here. And what we want to look at is see how many moles of I we have at some time, and then look at how many moles of I are formed during a certain time interval. And then when we look at a time later, the moles of I that we started with plus the moles of I that we formed by reaction must be what we have in the system. So let's write that in words. It's the moles of I in the volume V at time T plus the moles of I formed, and that will be by reaction, in V during delta T, must be equal to the moles of I in V at time t plus delta t. Let's try and put that now into symbols. Now moles of I, we've said we're using the symbol Ni, so that would be Ni at t plus the moles of I formed in V during delta t. Ri is the rate of formation of, of I and it has units of moles per unit volume per unit time. So we multiply by the volume and the unit time, which is delta t, and that must be equal to the number of moles of I a little bit later. What we can now do is arrange this, and it starts looking like a differential form. Delta t divided by delta t, and if we take the limit as delta t tends to zero, this just becomes dNi dt. Now this equation here, and I'll just rewrite it here, is a very important equation. It is the general equation for a batch reactor, and one can always start with this, reaction, with this equation when modeling a batch reactor. However, what I'd like to now do is take a simplification looking for at constant density systems. Now remember in a constant density system, volume is constant. So if I take this equation over here, the general equation, what we're saying is the reacting mixture volume won't change. So in other words, going back over here, in a constant density system, this volume stays fixed. Now also remembering, what I can do is write Ni here, this term, in terms of concentration, which are the moles of I per unit volume, times the volume of our system, which is V. So let's put all of that into our equation, and we end up with RIV, is equal to d by dt of ci v. But remember now that v is a constant, and so I can write that as v dci dt. Therefore, this simplifies to ri is equal to dci dt. And again, I'm going to mark this. This is only true for constant density systems. That is true in general. Let us now apply these equations to a simple example. And we're going to take the case A goes to B, 
we're going to assume that the reaction is first order in A. and that the system is constant density. And what we want to ask is to find out how concentration of A changes with time and then how concentration of B changes with time. Right, we're working with a batch reactor, constant density, and so what we can say then is that dCA dT will be equal to RA because we're working with a constant density system the system is first order in A, and so what we can then say is, well, the rate then is minus K C A. I can then integrate that, and I can combine variables, and I'll put the C A's together. It's equal to minus K D T, and I can then integrate. The integral of 1 over C A is equal to lin C A. And the integral of minus k dt, k is a constant, and so that's simply k, and then we need an integration constant. Our integration constant, or initial condition, would be at t, time at t equals naught, say that we have some initial concentration of A, which we'll call ca naught, and so then what we get is that lin ca naught is equal to the value of the constant. So substituting, we end up with lin ca is equal to minus kt plus lin ca naught or lin ca minus lin ca naught and if you remember your algebra for logs that is ca over ca naught is equal to minus kt so we've answered the first part how the concentration of a changes with time let's now look at the second part how does the concentration of B change with time? Well, what we know, what we know is from the mole balance that the number of moles of B that we start off with minus what we have at some point is equal to must be equal to Na minus Na naught. That is just a simple mole balance. But let's assume that we don't start off with any moles of B. What we then end up with then is Nb is equal to Na naught minus Na. And I can divide by volume, which says that Cb is equal to Ca naught minus Ca. So that is equal to Ca naught and if we have a look over here at this equation and rewrite it, this equation will give us that CA is equal to CA naught exponent minus KT. So substituting in here, we get that's equal to minus CA naught exponent minus KT. Or simplifying, we end up with CB is equal to CA naught 1 minus exponent minus kt. Now let's just check the solution and see that it has the right behavior. At t equals naught, exponent of naught is 1, and so what we'll end up with is this term goes to 0, and so cb is equal to 0, which is what we uh, said, and if t goes to infinity, this term goes to 0, and Cb will equal Ca0, and as our reaction is one mole going to one mole, that is correct.